Howdy YouTube! So, I guess some quick updates really quick. So, first off, um, a user named Waruzi, well, asked about the video delay. So, essentially, it can be summed up as, uh, I got sick and, well, a bit behind on coursework. So, I guess, uh, now let's get into the Q&A. Okay, so our first question is from the user, Jay, uh, Shalat. And their question is, what Linux distribution do you use for your primary computer? And also, what is the Gen 2 stream? So, I use Debian 11. Uh, it's very similar to the setup I've had quite a few years ago. But, uh, I mean, the number of, uh, on the distribution thing kind of changed. So, uh, we're going from Debian 8, I think, from when I started this channel, all the way up to, well, currently 11. So, this Brings us though to another thing. JSOLAT and Fresh Tablets and Joshua's questions are essentially when am I going to do a Gen 2 video or um, Gen 2 when? So that um, can pretty much be summed up as well, it's a little embarrassing. I haven't done a Gen 2 video. Um, I might do a Gen 2 video in the future. Uh, I moved up to Ivy Bridge and Sandy Bridge computers, so I guess uh, compiling stuff for everything is actually not as huge of a task as a low-voltage X200S is. Okay, so Fresh Tablet's question is, what are you using? Possible setup tour. So I'm using a 1536 by 2048, I think it was medical, SEO monitor. And it works pretty well. I've been using it for quite a while. Um, at the moment, it's hooked up to a T420, and oh my god, my hand is starting to hurt from holding this. But um, I am uh, planning on moving to an X330. I haven't really done a reinstall where I fixed all the uh, scaling issues because... Yeah, the 2K display mod. Um, you have to kind of scale things, so I haven't really had the time to do Well, what I'd like to do is a full reinstall. It's my uh, Debian 10 to Debian 11 um, disk upgrade started, uh, well, kind of making it hard to, uh, well, use the computer. A lot of things are broken. I've done a fresh Debian 11 install, but because it's... Uh, the X330 comes with, like, Tiano Core. I can't really just stick in my test disk or use my script because uh, it requires a certain type of partitioning for, like, UEFI. Anyways, though, um, yeah. So, moving on. Um, Rethi XYZ's question is, Is MMX Chan coming back online? Thoughts on software minimalism, DWM, and tiling Windows managers. Um, so, I'm going to go back to January 10th and use the clip for that, for this answer. So, uh, it actually turned out quite well. So, okay, so it's been a really long time since I've hosted any Chan site. I had fun doing it, and I would actually consider doing something similar again. But I did host uh, MMX Chan. Uh, quite a long time ago on this um, little uh, E1000 gateway Pentium system I found at the recycling center. Um, I think I ran it uh, first with like Tiny IB and FreeBSD on there. And then the second time I set it up, um, I used uh, Lane Chan's uh, code. Uh, it might be forked by now. It's, it's been... Like, this is many years ago. And on that, I just put, uh, essentially Debian Jesse on there and had it set up. I think I was, uh, yeah, I was set up at my parents' place. I couldn't really get a static IP on the university network. So, yeah, really long time ago. Anyways, though, uh, I guess that answers your question. Thought about it. Um... If I was going to do it again, I'd probably want to try something with, like, a power PC chip or uh, something old, but not quite that old. So, uh, the user ThinkpadDesu asks uh, about, well, my thoughts on Windows 11. So, 
I don't really use Windows, but I've heard a few things about it which uh, make it a little bit worse than even the uh, prior incarnation Windows 10. Well, they require TPM 2.0, which isn't really on all systems. I heard you might be able to get away with TPM 1.2. Essentially, it could force you to upgrade, well, your desktop or laptop if you want to use the software. So that uh, isn't exactly what I would consider a friendly business practice. And I've also heard some, uh, well, problems with AMD processors for schedule management, but uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, is old news by now. So. Anyways, though, moving on, we are on Anthony's question. So, Anthony's question essentially is, well, all this just translates to, what is your favorite angry bird? And uh, I've gotten the, what is your favorite angry bird on prior Q&As, and um, I don't really have a favorite angry bird. Um, I do know there are some, uh, clones, I think, that are, uh, well, free software, so I guess I'll go with that one. Yeah, I don't know. Um, anyways, though, to our next question. Doc's question is, what is the status of FOSS replacing the proprietary BIOS firmware contained by most computers? So... That's kind of a long question, but hopefully I can uh, answer it without it turning into a rambly mess. So, first off, uh, well, Libreboot had a recent release. Um, it su still supports mainly uh, Opteron 6100, 6200, 4100, and 4200 for the like larger workstation and server boards. A lot of Core 2 Duos from the ThinkPad line, and a single Chromebook, I believe, that has an ARM processor. Okay, so for Core Boot, I really would just check out the documentation. It supports a very wide range of systems. Um, for ThinkPads, it uh, pretty much goes up to T440p and a few other uh, Haswell boards. Um, possibly can be Core Booted. I haven't tried it, but uh, they're out there. And in terms of not ThinkPads, it goes way further. I mean, there's like Purism laptops that uh, come with Core Boot, and there's also just quite a bit of boards out there. I would check out the documentation. There's a status report thing on the old Core Boot uh, wiki, and for the new documentation, it's um, a little bit harder to read, but uh, every, all the information's there, and it's more up to date. So, yeah. Um, if you have a newer system, try out Core Boot, I guess, and also don't forget about Intel ME Cleaner. So, anyways, though, for our next question, BL's question is, Happy New Year slash Christmas. Which computer are you using as your daily driver nowadays? And do you have any home servers? Um... So right now I'm kind of in between systems, uh, T420. So yeah, I actually bought this originally as a backup, but oh well. Um, I do not have any home servers. I've had them in the past, but uh, it's kind of hard to have a static IP at this apartment complex. So unfortunately I do not have a, well, home server at the moment, but eh, I might make a NAS or something and put it on a sort of local area network thing. Anyways, though, um, we're moving on to CTARX question. Uh, CTARX? Um, anyways, though, um, uh, moving on, what's your Linux workflow and what app slash scripts do you use? Okay, so well, I pretty much still use uh, Debian and i3WM and Vim for the text editor. I use a few scripts combined with some like C programs for well, quick installations. It's essentially just the bootstrap. Um, for video editing, I use a combination of 
Well, FFmpeg, Audacity, and Caden Live, also Image Magic. So, um, for some like useful computer repair stuff, um, well, first uh, CDW for burning disks and stress for well stress testing. I'm still looking for a well simple graphics card benchmark at the moment. Uh, I've been using well Unigen and. Well, it works, but some free software alternatives would be great, and um, I'm sorry about the late reply. Anyways, though, on to the next question. Aaron's question is, do you think you are more productive with tiling Windows managers over traditional desktop environments? Well, I hope I am. I've been using i3wm for quite a while, but, um, well... I think it comes up to personal preference, but I myself feel like tiling Windows managers are a little bit more productive. There's a little bit of a trade-off, but I do like using like hotkeys for everything, so that's quite nice. Um, okay, so this brings us to our next question. It's from the user Iron Johnson, and their question is, okay, so app image versus flat pack versus snap versus compiling it yourself. Also, what have you been working on? Any FOSS projects you'd like some help with? Happy New Year. Well, it's a little bit late for me to say Happy New Year's as well, but I could say Happy Rest of the Year. Well, at the moment, I haven't really done too much. Uh, I did a little bit of messing around with some uh, linear, I guess, cell algorithms. They're kind of cool, but... Um, Rather than a few, like, uh, small programs here and there, not really any large projects. Okay, so I haven't really used Snap before. I used it a few times, didn't have a great experience. I haven't used flat packs or app images. I know Snap is kind of, like, centralized around, well, canonical. And for app images and flat packs, I've heard different things about, uh, file sizes and things like that, but, uh, this is just cursory research. I don't really have any personal experience with that. So I figured though, I should at least state my, you know, general process. So first is Debian normal repository then Debian testing repository. And then after that, well, you can compile or, and you also have like foreign repositories sometimes. And then at the end of the list for stuff that's probably proprietary and you can't really do any of these things uh, stated above, there is always the .deb file that just magically installs it with dpkg slash i. So anyways though, my installation though got kind of messed up on the Debian 10 to Debian 11 upgrade. So probably my next video is just gonna be fixing that installation and doing all the UI scaling for like a uh, 2K display that's on the, well, my uh, modded uh, X230 ThinkPad I got. So I think that is our last question. So I hope you guys have a good rest of the year and well, um, I'm going to go try to edit this together. So uh, have a good one.